what, what I'm going to do over the course of the next hour, and, and listen, I'm just going to keep talking and talking and talking. Um, and if somebody wants to interrupt, if you got a question, raise your hand um, or um, unmute or send us a question, um, all of that. Um, uh, I'm going to try and open up for questions. If I run over, um, then we'll just do this in a second session. Um, so we'll see how it goes. Um, so I, I wanted to start by saying that opportunity exists. There, there, there's so much opportunity out there. You probably don't even realize the opportunity that is out there. Um, my job over the course of the next hour or so is to try and open your eyes and help you maybe take advantage of some opportunity that exists. Um, throughout the course of the um, next hour, um, there are several concepts that, that are just going to continually arise and they're going to come, uh, come to the front over and over and over and over again. Um, and I may not call your attention to them, but if you've got a piece of paper and a pen, uh, good morning, Mary Corcoran, how are you? Hey, good to see you. Um, if you got a piece of paper and a pen, do me a favor, write down the following, okay? The, these are, the, the, these, and, and it might sound like nonsense, but I'm going to give you concrete examples. Um, good morning, Chris, good to see you, how are you? Hey, <laughs> um, be passionate, okay? Be passionate. Um, and that might not sound like it's gonna earn you any money, but I swear to God it's going to. Uh, be th this is huge. Be generous with your time and with your money, okay? Um, and again, I'm gonna, keep, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna give you stories that, that help to concretize some of these con uh, concepts. Be authentic, okay? Um, create social capital. Creating social capital is enormous. Create community. And finally, probably one of my favorite in this list is to be audacious. Okay, be audacious. Think big, think enormous, think outside of the box. I just started listening to, um, I won't get into that, but I started uh, very quickly, I started listening to um, uh, a New York Times bestseller on an audio as an audio book this morning. And some of the concepts that are out there, I, I mean, within three years, they're anticipating that there are going to be hovercraft uh, that will be uh, transporting people to and from destinations in LA and in Dallas. Um, that is audacious thinking. So um, anyway, I'm going to give you, uh, many of you have heard the story. Um, what was the third one? The third one, let me go through them again real quickly. Um, be passionate. Be generous with your time and your money. Be authentic. Create social capital. Create community. And then be audacious. Okay. I'm going to go through my story very, very, very quickly. A lot of you have heard this. I don't tell the story to you. You're welcome. Um, I don't tell the story to you in any, um, a, 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 in any, for any reason other than um, for it to be inspirational. I don't look for sympathy. Um, the flip side is I'm not looking for applause. Um, a lot of you have heard it, um, but for those, and so for, for those of you who have, terrific, for those of you who haven't, it's kind of an interesting story. Um, I grew up in Buffalo. I was born in 1965. My dad was a cop in the city of Buffalo. He was drunk on the day that I was born. He was drunk when he died eight years ago. In between, dining room comfortable, human being. There was violence in the house. Um, there was a gun that went off one time, at one point in time, sending my father to the hospital. Um, he risked, um, he missed losing his life by literally a quarter of an inch. Bullet enters his cheek, shoots out his, uh, his earlobe, uh, and, and instead of dying, the guy gets a facelift. So um, they, they, like, they literally they, like, take his entire face. Um, I have a brother who ended up in a federal penitentiary um, as a result of kidnapping. Um, it's the stuff, uh, it's definitely lifetime television kind of shit. Um, and so I had two options, I had two opportunities. One was to follow um, down that same path um, in the way that one of my brothers has. Um, good morning, Jennifer. Um, or uh, the other option was, um, good morning, Bob. Uh, the other option was um, to um, just make something of myself. And I chose the latter. Um, I went to the U of R, I got a degree in political science. Um, I started, um, I, <laughs> which by the way, my, my family tells me, get a degree, any degree in the world will be your voice for. I get a degree in political science. Um, and, um, uh, and, and, and it's a useless, it's, it's absolutely a useless degree. Um, so I start attending bar um, uh, when I graduate um, because I didn't know what else to do with myself. I needed to put money on the table. I was involved in politics. I decided that I was going to sell real estate because I couldn't figure out what else to do. And everybody that I knew around me who was driving an expensive car 
they were all selling real estate. I said, I thought to myself, well, anybody can get the real estate license. So I got a degree in real estate and, and here we are. I was not rich in education, but I was rich definitely in interconnectedness and I was rich in passion. Um, so, um, so I was talking to Cam about this the other day. Um, I had several things going on in my life. I was tending bar and I knew a lot of people, um, but I was also involved in politics. Um, I was a gay kid in the 1980s working towards social justice. So I started using my, uh, my um, social engagement and, and, uh, and connectedness to raise money for political candidates. And a, a real interesting side story, we, the first fundraiser that I ever did, I raised three hundred and fifty dollars for one whose name was Rachel Heading. She was on the city school board. As a result of that, I was able to lobby her and the city school board to become the first uh, school district in the country not to allow the U.S. military to recruit until um, until that point in time when it is that they would no longer discriminate against gay men and lesbians in the military. Now, whether or not you agree with the concept or not, I don't really care. The concept is that I was passionate and I was connected and I was able to do something that, you know, I was like 23 years old and CNN was carrying this story, which is really interesting. So I've got a lot of people I know because I'm social and I'm, I'm tending bar. Then I've got a lot of people that I know because of politics and, and I start selling real estate. So what do I do? I start mailing to the people that I know through politics and I start mailing to everybody that I knew um, as a result of my social connections and I started making money. And that money that I was making, in part, I was using it to um, write larger checks to political candidates. And then I was taking some of that money and I was hosting more people at dinner at my house or holding more interesting more or, or more expensive um, uh, dinner uh, 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 social parties and gatherings and cocktail parties. And the whole thing just started to swirl and started to interconnect and come in on itself. Um, so, um, and, 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 and as a result, everything just became bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. So any questions so far before I go on to, so, so part of all that is be audacious and be generous with your time. Any questions before I go on? Because I'm gonna be watching here in the top right corner. Um, as I'm going on, um, and, and feel free to jump in or just, or, or just unmute. Um, so part of the concept of being generous with your time and your money you, you can't just be, you, you just can't be involved or, um, and, and do things um, with your time and your money unless you're doing it authentically. And what I mean by that is if, if, if I knew that the top five CEOs who were all hiring a hundred new employees over the course of the next year were all involved in I don't know, and, and, and I don't mean to be political, but it's the first thing that comes to mind. If they're all involved in the Donald Trump reelection campaign, I'm probably not gonna go to that meeting in hopes of becoming um, acquainted with these guys and hoping to get a hundred new um, leads from each of them. Why? Because it would be less than authentic and people snip out and they're desperate for it and they want authenticity. So, so if you're gonna be generous with your time, if you're gonna volunteer um, your time, if you're gonna start writing checks, you need to do so authentically. Philippa, I saw an animal uh, back there. Tell him, tell, tell him or her cat that I said hello. Um, so if you do it authentically, you're going to do fine. And then, and then, um, and then, you're, what you're doing is you're creating social capital. And what I mean by social capital is you become so engaged and so involved with so many people because you've done you you, you become ubiquitous. You're everywhere and you're doing great things for people so that when it is that they need to turn to somebody who's selling real estate, inevitably they're gonna end up turning to you. So, um, um, so, so let me give you some concrete examples of this. Tomorrow, I'm talking to a, 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 a 16 or 17 year old girl whose name is Elisa. She's in the Gates Child Life School District. I get a call from an old client who is an advisor. She's thinking about becoming a real estate agent. I'm gonna spend half an hour on the phone with her tomorrow talking about whether, how it is that one becomes a real estate agent. I'm not gonna get anything from that necessarily, but you know what? It's a good thing to do. And you just keep doing it. And, and honestly, if I didn't wanna do it, I wouldn't because it would be less than authentic. So, so as a result, you start to create social capital. Um, you know what, actually I'm sitting here, uh, Mary, only because you're right there. We sat down, what, three months ago? Uh, like, I think in March before COVID, but yeah. Oh, actually, right you know what? Yeah, it was, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, time loses all. And, and, and we talked about things in my, in my office that 
probably won't benefit me as, as a real estate agent. But you know what? I, as we walked away from the meeting, I was like, I really like Mary. Like, you know, she's, she's yeah. Um, so, so, you know, so you, you create um, uh, social capital. Um, so I get these kinds of phone calls all the time. Um, actually, it's really funny, but 15 years ago, I get a call from a friend of mine. His name is Bob. Bob says, um, hey, my 16-year-old daughter, Erin, is thinking about becoming a real estate agent. Can she spend the day with you driving around in your car um, and, and seeing whether or not she likes it? Well, uh, fast forward 15 years, Erin Duffy um, moves back from Chicago and she became a member of my real estate team, which is a really, really great story. So it does pay off in some, some way. So I, I get calls all the time. How do I become a more successful real estate agent? I want to run for political office. How do I do so? Um, I need to raise some money. Can you help me do so? Um, when Marissa, who's our social media coordinator, first started, two um, emails came through, two Facebook messages came through that I remember her laughing about. The first one was somebody who said, hey, um, the new, the, the old train station has been demolished. There's a temporary train station. Where is it? I, I'm getting on a train going to New York City tomorrow. Where is it that I can access train? What is the news of the, the new platform and where are the doors? And Marissa laughs. She's like, what the hell is that about? Um, and she, and she, she deleted the message and she told, thankfully she told me this and I said, Marissa, that's just what we do. People come to us with this kind of shit all of the time. And so um, we, I don't even know who it was, but we, we researched it and we got back to this person and we said, you know what, um, here's how you're going to access. Literally two, three days later, she laughed again. She said, I guess you're right because somebody um, emailed and said, hey, I'm looking for a great dog groomer. Now, I don't own a dog. I'm looking for a great dog groomer. Who do you recommend? I had no clue, but we pulled members of the team and there's a place on Park Avenue called Bark Avenue. We referred this person and three days later, we get a nice photo uh, with Fluffy and Fluffy had like, you know, gotten his hair done or whatever, the big bow or whatever. Um, and, and it's all about creating social capital. When it comes time for this guy to sell his house, if he's asking me where to get his dog groomed, I think he's probably going to reach out to me and ask me to help him sell his property. So again, I'm gonna pause here for a moment. Any questions, any concerns, anybody? I'm gonna get some water also. Anybody gonna jump in? No? Okay. So, so in this day and age of social isolation, in general, over the course of the past, I'd say five or 10 years, we as a community, um, as a society, are more and more desperate for interconnectedness. Everybody is so connected to their phone and to their iPad and to their computer that they're losing connection with people and with others. Um, over the course of the past nine months, that has been exacerbated um, and it has become, um, it has become, it's gotten to the point where people are desperate for community. So you can start to create community in the way that I did from the time that I started selling real estate 37 years ago until today. So um, ideas and thoughts for you to consider. At that point in time, when, well, actually, no, even now. So, so let me, I was going to say parties at your house. I used to host parties at the house all the time. I still, well, actually not now, but, but I, I, I will very, very soon, sometime in the next six months, I will resume holding parties at the house. When, and, and it's all about interconnectedness. Um, when I was 25 years old and I couldn't afford a caterer, I would spend a day or two or three making hors d'oeuvres so when people would arrive, I would actually have um, uh, food to, uh, to, to prepare to them. Now, um, I actually just have a caterer do this, um, but there was, uh, there was a point in time when um, I, I would actually do this, I had to do this on my own. And, and when you were doing that, I would make sure that we would introduce people to each other at the party because you're creating a sense of community. Um, at this point in time, when I'm hosting a dinner party, not only am I hosting a dinner party, and not only is it catered, and not only am I enjoying myself because it goes back to the concept of authenticity, but also I'm doing it strategically. So I will have the, um, the, the CEO of Rochester Regional Health um, sitting there with the executive director of um, uh, United Way. 
and the president of um, Nazareth College and Bob Duffy from the Chamber of Commerce. Why? Because each of these people might need some, or each, actually it, it's, it's, it's the point strategically where I know that uh, the United Way wants to tap in some of the funds from, uh, from Rochester Regional Health. And I know that, and you start, you start to create these, uh, these situations where you're, creating, where you're benefiting people. And as a result of that kind of thing, again, you're getting more and more people to um, come to the, come to my house, enjoying conversation with me. Um, and, and then in turn, we get one third of all of the relocation work for Rochester Regional Health. It's about $4 million worth of real estate business that comes our way. Obviously, I wasn't able to do this when it was that I was 23 years old, but I was able to have individual friends over who would refer their friends to me and so on and so on and so on. Um, so at that point in time, when it is, and, and, and by the way, uh, the, um, it's, it's sort of bold and audacious that you would invite some of these people to your table. Because again, remember, I'm inviting these very high powered Rochesterians. But if you go back 35 years, my dad was having his face blown off in the house back in Buffalo uh, by somebody in the family. So think big, think audacious, create social capital and be authentic. All right. Um, I had great success and great luck um, when I was uh, starting out in my career, not by buying somebody a gift certificate for a restaurant or by buying them a bottle of wine. But at that point in time, I would always take them out to dinner, again, creating relationships. Um, at this point in time, I'm not able to do that individually. So what we started doing a few years ago was inviting five or six um, couples to dinner all at the same time. So we will have these dinners, um, these dinner parties at a local restaurant uh, where we'll have 20 people, all of whom have recently bought or sold property with us. And again, what we're doing is we're trying to create, and we're, tr we're setting people next to each other strategically in a way so that they're creating community amongst themselves. And 10 years from now, 11 years from now, when it is they go to buy or sell, they're gonna think about, um, about using us. So, um, if, somebody, uh, if somebody in your circle um, has a family member that passes away, send flowers to the funeral home. Show up at the funeral home. Don't just send the flowers, show up at the funeral home. When somebody gives birth, hire a cleaning service to go over to uh, that individual's house um, and clean for a day or send a meal over. Don't ask the question. Nobody ever, nobody ever, ever, um, when you ask, is there anything that I can do? Nobody ever says, yes, I need you too. Just assume that they're gonna need a meal sent over to the property. Just assume that they're gonna need their house clean and do it. Um, this past spring, um, this pet, I owned um, EDW, the restaurant. Um, so we're down there and we're panicked because I, I literally think that we're going bankrupt. I, I truly honestly thought we were going bankrupt. So I go down there and we just start grabbing food from EDW stuff that's perishable. And after a while, uh, we got into all the perishable and I found these enormous, enormous cans of pumpkin pie filling. Um, and I thought to myself, oh, Sarah, that is a very, very cute dog. <laughs> so, um, I'm thinking to myself, what the hell am I going to do with all this pumpkin pie filling? So I was doing two things uh, with, with that. Um, during, um, during our initial um, uh, isolation, I was just calling clients, not as a real estate agent. I was calling clients as a friend just to check in with them and find out how they're doing. And as a result of, I was probably making 20 phone calls a week, maybe probably 25 phone calls a week. And inevitably, there were two, three, four uh, people who were in real distress. They had lost their job. Somebody was sick. They were uh, they were depressed, um, and I had all this pumpkin pie filling. I started making pumpkin bread, um, and I realized that it was spring, and pumpkin bread isn't seasonal. Um, and I started making all this pumpkin bread, and then wrapping it up, and then driving it to people's houses um, over and over and over again, just to let with a, with a handwritten note saying, "Hey, um, just want to let you know that I'm thinking about you. That you're not alone in this. If you need anything, pick up the phone, give me a call, let me know." Um, again, the concept is creating social capital and you just keep doing all this stuff over and over and over and over and over again. And this year, my team and I, we're going to sell $60 million worth of residential real estate. It, it, it won't, it won't actually be, um, I mean, 55 that will actually be through the MLS. We sold about $5 million off market, so that won't be included, but we're going to sell $60 million of that $60 million, um, uh, in real estate about, um, about 80%, 78% of it is, um, uh, is referral based. And it's referral based because of this. So stated another way, about $50 million of the business is falling into my at lap this past year as a result of me just creating social capital.
Um, and I'm just going to say one more time, any questions so far? Because I'm feeling a little lonely here. I've been talking for 25 minutes. Somebody, anybody? I have a question. This is Rita. Hey, Rita. Hi. So from the day, I know you've been in the business for 30 years and you've yeah. developed from a political standpoint and from, from your social networking standpoint. Give us um, the look, what it looked like your first five years, then your next five to, to get to the point of where you're at at 30 years of business. Sure. Um, so, so this is probably not going to answer. I don't think there's any one answer, but let me just uh, hit on it. Um, everything that I'm talking about right now that I'm doing, I was more or less doing it then, but in a smaller scale. So hosting dinner parties. And I mentioned I would host dinner parties. I would do it all of the time. Um, and, but, but I, I would have to make the food myself. And I was always and constantly uh, bringing people over to the house. I was involved in politics because I love politics. And at the age of 32 or 33, I found myself on the board of the Rochester Philharmonic Orchestra because I love music. Find your passion. My passion was politics and music. What's your passion? Your passion might be your son's little league baseball team. Um, get involved with the team. Or your passion might be your church. Um, um, and you know what, Ho host the baked goods sale at the church or invite people from the church over to your house uh, for a strategy session or just, you know, a get to know you kind of thing. Um, in other words, just start doing that and then just don't let up. Um, but in one of the concepts that's going to come later in the conversation is this whole time that you're doing this, add everybody's name to the database everybody cam and i were talking the other day and um i asked him whether or not um his wife's father's his father-in-law's best friend is on the database his father-in-law's uh, best friend is not in the database nor is his um, mother-in-law's best friend in the database put them in the database you might not know them all that well but put them in the database anyway who cares um eventually um, and, and so the people from the baked goods sale, the church, or the people from the Little League team, find out everybody's name and just start mailing to them and just keep growing the database and keep growing the database and keep growing. When I first started out, when I was um, tending bar, the it, was a database, not a working it was a database of 350 names that I knew socially. Um, and then I started becoming more and more and more involved. Um, and then it grew to 500 and then 700. So at this point in time, we have um, uh, three databases that I'll reference. One database are people that I know personally, like I've got some kind of relationship with them. And that's probably 1,200 to 1,500 names. Then there are, is a, a larger database of people that I've interacted with at one point in time in my life or another. Maybe it was just a phone call or maybe it was um, a, a 6,000 names there. But we mail four or five times a year to 35,000 people. These are um, everybody who resides in the southeast quadrant of the city, everybody who rides in Brighton, Pittsburgh, and in Fairport. Um, just keep growing the database and growing it and growing it. And again, start small. Whatever you can afford to do today, do it. And then do it some more. And then do it some more. And keep doing it. And don't stop doing it. Create the, um, uh, 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 create the um, relationships with people. Um, add them to your database. And uh, it keep going on and on and on. Um, Ready to answer the question? Uh, do you snail mail or email? Oh, great. Great question. Um, uh, I, I do both. Um, uh, you, 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 you've got to hit this from um, all, so somebody who's 26 years old probably is gonna take the snail mail and just toss it. They're probably not gonna be interested, uh, but send to them anyway, because you're creating um, a, a recognition. Um, so we send, um, as I said, four or five times a year to, um, uh, to 35,000 people. Um, every other week, oh, I'll, oh hey, hey, Dara. Yes, you do get my snail mail. <laughs> I keep trying to get you to work with me, Dara, and you're not. Um, uh, every other week I'm sending out, um, I'm emailing to 15,000 people and, um, on week one, it's just a, 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 a few photos of what's going on with the team. Um, maybe a house that we've, uh, recently sold or maybe, um, Josh's baby because, uh, Josh, we just became a father. And then, um, our, um, sales for the month and our uh, sales for the year interest rate. And then usually 
uh, 350 uh, words, uh, a blurb uh, from me. Uh, where do I get my emails from? Uh, I think I, I, uh, uh, I, I write them actually. So I write all my own stuff. Um, so, so that's on week one. And then week three, two weeks later, we're emailing um, a blog post. Um, and my blog posts are getting, um, uh, they've gotten to the point where 3000 people are reading my blog posts because honestly, I, 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 there are things that I'm not good at. So, so um, uh, if, if, I'm, if I were to ask to throw a ball from here to the other side of the room, couldn't do it. However, you ask me to sit down and, and, and do uh, a 1200 word blog post, I'm pretty good at it. And, and this seems to be resonating with people. And so, um, so that goes out in week three and then back to, and then back, uh, we start again. So, we, so, so I write all my own emails. Um, if, you, if you're not a good writer, you can go ahead and you can buy templates um, online before you actually sign the contract. Just see whether or not this is actually good stuff. Um, and if you're not a good writer, um, then ask your mortgage broker or ask your engineer, ask your HVAC tech, people that you're giving business to, ask them to provide content. Um, regular email is easier for compliance than email. Uh, I did not know that there was a compliance. I probably need to look into the fact that I'm probably, I'm, I'm probably screwing something up in terms of compliance. Um, Abby, there were a few questions here um, that, that I'm trying to like answer and also uh, look at the questions. Did I miss any? Yep, I've got, what did you send out in the mail in the beginning when you don't really have stats or anything to share? Oh, great. So, so, so um, I'm not necessarily just sending out stats. Um, uh, I'm sending out a lot of, um, a, a, a lot of information. So first of all, and I really mean this, read my blog posts. And then, and then, and then lift, you know, like if you see some ideas or thoughts or concepts, then steal them. I don't care. I mean, just, you know, just, just grab it. It's, it's, it's out there. Um, and, um, and so what, what I would, what I would write about is the market is up X percent. Um, and I think it's because, um, Kodak just hired 3000. Actually, I just did a big blog post about, um, Oh, good. Todd, I love the fact that you're guilty of stealing my stuff. Thank you for saying that. Um, uh, Go ahead and and talk about. Uh, I I just did a blog post on cli on, on climate migration, and cli and there are more and more people. We're moving a lot of people here to the area as a result of climate migration and, out of, and as a result of viral migration. We think that's a really interesting topic. So um so, so I, I wrote about that. Um, I just wrote about um, bidding wars. Um uh in, in what's going on in terms of bidding wars and whether or not I think they're going to continue. Forecast the future, and if you're wrong, you're wrong. I mean, like nobody's going to hold you to it. Um, and again, talk about interest rates. Talk about what's going on with the national um, uh, 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 in, 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 uh, and what's going on with the national economy. David, you just asked a question. Could you um, unmute and ask that a little bit more? And then I'm going to go back, and I'm going to set um, some of these aside because I want to get to some of these stories that lured you here uh, to our meeting. So, David, go ahead, bud. So, um, I. I, I raised a question about how much when you're doing writing or doing your, you know, building relationships, how much do you make it about you versus about the market or the, the clients? Because one of the people had asked how you reach out to people and when you didn't have numbers to share and all that stuff, and that's all about you. Right. So I was just kind of wondering how much is it about you versus the audience that you're trying to. It's almost never about me. Um, it's, you know, it's, it's really, um, it's almost never about me. It's about, because that's boring. Like who the hell, who gives a shit? I mean, honestly, like who cares what I'm doing or, but, 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 but there's, there's, there's also, and as I'm thinking about it, it's an interesting question because there is a place for that and that's Facebook. So, you know, you can talk about, you know, um, flying off to Jamaica in a private jet, and well, actually, I wouldn't even do that. Um, I'll do it with you guys, but I'm not going to do that, you know, to to a group of, you know, uh, 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 so so I've, I've actually got four thousand nine hundred like sixty some uh, friends on Facebook. Um, so 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 Facebook, I think, is a great uh, place um, to do that kind of thing. But in terms of my writing, um, in terms of my blog posts, um, uh, hardly at all. Um, when when we're doing these emails every other week, we'll talk about how much uh, we've sold in the past month. But it's really less about me. Um, but you know, but what's really interesting is people kind of get the message. You know, like I don't have to say like, "Hey, look what I did." And you know what? It's it's sort of out there. If you know, if people are just sort of looking. I hope that answered the question for you. Um, okay, so I can go back to some of um, 
Uh, okay, so here's some of the other things that, um, uh, Telly, let's hold that and then come back to me, all right? Um, just unmute after, after I'm, I'm done with my next. Um, so here's some of the other things that we've done to create network, and then we're gonna talk about some of these stories. Um, uh, thanks, Abby, um, appreciate that. Um, in terms of creating social capital, um, in years past, we've invited our clients, our, our previous clients to come out to Wickham Farms and we serve them cider and donuts, we give them pumpkins. This past year, we weren't able to do it. So instead we, um, we had them to my house, everybody was masked and we gave away uh, pumpkins here at the house and it went really, really, really well. Um, last year, we delivered 500 pies to previous clients in the week, week and a half before um, Thanksgiving. This year, my, and, and my staff last year, my staff last year was going to kill me. They're like, well, you're out of your fucking mind is what they said to me. And sorry, I know, uh, I know Chris, and I'm sorry, Vicky, my apologies. Uh, but, th but that's what they said, um, you're out of your mind. So, th and, and you know what, it went off and it went off flawlessly. I loved it. This year, we delivered over, a th we delivered 1,100 pumpkin pies uh, pie uh, and apple pies to clients um, and it took us an entire week and I swear like literally we got 200 I got 250 personal responses so so there's a corollary uh, so, so first of all think big that was audacious wasn't it but it was also um, it, 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 it could have been very very um, impersonal but one of the things that I learned this year was that I would go out and I would deliver my pies that day while the rest of the team was delivering their pies and I would come back and I would literally have 30, 35 emails, text messages, phone calls from clients um, one, uh, uh, thanking me for the pies. Um, and I would then have to spend the next two or three hours responding to them in, in a very, very personal way. And the reason I had to respond to them in a personal way was because you didn't want them to feel as though they were just like one more person in the sea of thousands and so so making sure that you're being as things start to grow and as you start to get you got to make sure that you don't fall you find yourself in the problem that i had a few years ago where i was relying so much on technology that it started to put a lot of distance between myself and my clients and so this year we're using technology and we're, we're, we're reaching out to a lot of people but then i'm making sure that i'm personally reaching out to people um so 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 there's a really interesting story um uh back to social media for a second one of my clients, so, so, so the internet, uh, Facebook in particular, there are probably about 25 or 30 of these uh, friends who received a pie who would post to Facebook a photo of the pie with a little blurb, look what our real estate agent did. And then people were sharing and there were all sorts of comments. One of the comments that I read was from a former client. Um, and this former client said to me, uh, said, how did you get a pie from Mark Seawick? Oh, I bought a house from him 20 years ago. He has a very long database. She said, I knew I should have um, uh, bought my last house from him, but we were in a hurry and I, I, I made a mistake. My bad move. Um, I could really use a pie right around now. <laughs> uh, Mary, what do you think I did? You took her a pie. At 9.15 at night. 9.15 at night, I drove two pies over. I set them down and I said, enjoy your pie. Now, when she goes to buy or sell her next house, who do you think she's going to use? Jamie Columbus, who she bought her last house with? I don't think so. She's going to she's going to end up picking the phone, uh, picking up the phone, give me a call, and that got like a lot of traction on social media. So, um, uh, um, so, all right. So this, all right. So, so just a few more things, um, and then we're going to get started to get to some of these stories. Um, do I want to answer questions or stories? Let's do uh, stories and save questions for the end, Mark. Okay. Very good. All right. Um, okay, so, 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 so some of the, what it is that I lured, how it is that I lured you here? Um, I told you that I was involved in politics and I started becoming more and more involved, not just in politics, but also um, uh, in the community, uh, sitting on the board of the RPO, et cetera. So I used, so, so I started to know these really, really, really interesting people. So I used to, about 20 years ago, I started to host salons in my living room and I would invite 50, 55 um, clients to the house and they would sit down and, um, and, um, in the living room while a guest speaker would sit and talk. And amongst the guest speakers were um, uh, Attorney General Elliot Spitzer, who went on to become Governor Elliot Spitzer. Um, 
we then had Governor Elliot Spitzer come and sit. Um, we had uh, Congressman Chuck Schumer, who then became Senator Chuck Schumer. They both came on two separate occasions. Uh, a woman named Sandy Parker. Sandy was head of the uh, 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 the Chamber of Commerce at the time. Uh, Bob Duffy, uh, who um, who was chief of, uh, chief of police at the time. Um, there was a woman named Libby Scarrett. And so, you know, if, if you get like, you know, 50, 55, 60 of your clients and they're sitting there with a U.S. senator or um, or the governor of the state of New York, they're probably going to think about me when it is that they go to sell their house. Um, and, and again, it's audacious and you're creating social capital. Um, so, um, so let me, let, let, let's, let's, let's talk about um, uh, Chuck, uh, which one are we going to do first? Yeah, we'll, we'll do Chuck Schumer. So uh, my partner Duffy uh, was uh, the state chair of something called the Empire State Pride Agenda, political action committee and lobby uh, to help secure gay and lesbian civil rights uh, uh, for, for uh, gay and lesbian New Yorkers. Um, so he does this thing. For, so we used to go to New York um, um, all the time for these unbelievable and remarkable events. And I used to meet all these really interesting people. Um, I met Congressman Chuck Schumer on several occasions. And after the first time that I met him, I just sent him a note, a, a, a handwritten note, a card uh, with my card inside of it saying, great meeting you. Look forward to seeing you next time I'm in New York. And I did that on two or three or four um, occasions um, after first meeting him. Um, so what ended up happening? Um, he picks up the phone one day. He says, hey, Mark, it's Congressman Schumer. I was like, Chuck, what's going on? Um, he says, I'm going to be in town um, a week from Tuesday. Could you do me a favor? Could you pick me up at the airport? I was like, yeah, what's going on? He says, well, I'm, I'm gearing up for my one for U.S. Senate. I was like, terrific, Chuck, let's do it. So I pick up Chuck at the airport and it's just Chuck. And we, I drive him around and I take him to, you know, the Park F Fest or, you know, the, the Greek Fest or whatever. Um, and, and, and my memories of this are really funny. He's got like chicken uh, grease and shit all in his beard and his face and he's got ice cream in his beard like just a mess but he's, he's a very 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 personable guy and great comes a second time a third a fourth and every time like he would come a second and he would bring somebody with him then then the third time would be a, a, another person i'm at breakfast at giants one day and i run into the deputy mayor um jeff carlson and um and i stopped by the table and i'm chatting with him he says hey do you know um, the chief of police I was like bob my name is mark Sewick. it's nice to meet you um i said hey i'm going to meet with congressman schumer right now um, and I'm going to be driving around. Do either of you need anything? And um, and Bob, Bob Duffy says, actually, you know what? If we don't get approved for a COPS grant, it's an acronym, C-O-P-S. If we don't get approved for a COPS grant by the um, Clinton administration by noon tomorrow, we're going to lose out on $500,000. And we really need this to buy new radios for, uh, for the force. I was like, well, let me ask him. So I pick um, Chuck up. At this point in time, it's midway through the campaign. There are three um, associates in the back. Chuck's in the passenger seat and I'm driving along. I mentioned this to him. He's like, hey, um, Sally, Susie, whatever, um, get Janet on the phone. Um, phone is handed up to, uh, to Chuck. He talks to Chuck, he hands the phone back. And um, he says, um, uh, he says, hey, tell, uh, tell the chief of police that Janet is approving the contract. Now, first of all, it, it, many of you are too young. It was Janet Reno who was the um, a, a attorney general for the United States of America. He picks up the phone, he calls her. I get a $500,000 grant. I was like, that was really cool. So in turn, I pick up the phone. I call Bob Duffy. I say, hey, congratulations. Well, as a result of that, um, uh, A, we got the $500,000. B, I invited Bob Duffy and his wife, Barb, to dinner. We had a great time. Bob, to this day, remains one of my best friends. Um, as a result of that, Aaron ends up on my real estate team and probably about two years, three years after I met Bob, we invited him over to the house. I had paid for a poll with somebody else here in town and we had asked him to run for mayor at my dining room table. We ran the campaign out of. So that's how it is that um, we got a $500,000 grant for the, for the city of Rochester and how it is that we um, helped to get Bob W to become mayor of the city. So kind of, a, and so, so what's going on there? It's audacious. Um, it's all about uh, creating social capital. But one of the things that I haven't talked about yet is the need for you to um, uh, get stationary and write personal notes. Nobody gets personal notes anymore. Write personal notes. It's so important. And then stick your business card in there and do it over and over and over again. Um, one of the things that, that happens um, on my team when I'm out to dinner 
Um, and I go out to dinner, um, you know, I, I'm out to dinner um, and I, um, or I'm chairing a fundraiser, I'm attending a fundraiser, I'm having a cocktail party 24 nights out of 30. Um, and there are many nights where I'll pick up the phone and I'll call uh, my, uh, somebody from the team. And I'll say, listen, I had a conversation for 10 minutes with some guy named Joe. He lives on Main, uh, on, on Elm, Elm Street in the town of Brighton, and he works for the Department of Public Works or he works for Google. Find out who he is. And, and so what ends up happening that, that next morning is, A, we've identified who it is that I had the conversation with. B, um, we've added them to the database. Keep growing your database and keep mailing to it. And C, um, we ended up, um, oh, and then, and then um, there's a, a blank note card with a sticky note with the name's person, uh, with, the, with the person's name and their address sitting on my desk. So when I walk in the, uh, in, in the office in the morning, I immediately jot a note to the person and mail it off. So any questions on that? No? Who do you want to hear about next? Do you want to hear about, um, oh, let's, do you want to hear about Jamaica or do you want to hear about this Hollywood starlet? Eric, you, you, get, a cho you get a choice here, bud. Eric, we're waiting for you, bud. Uh, Hollywood Starlet. Hollywood Starlet. Okay. So Duffy's on the board. Duffy, my partner, is on the board of the Empire State Pride Agenda. And it was very, very, very cool in that we've started going to like all these like incredible um, uh, parties in New York year after year after year after year after year. Um, and so, you know, you'd be like having you know, a cocktail with Sarah Jessica, Sarah Jessica Parker or... Um, uh, well, anyway, interesting people. So one of the members of the board is a woman whose name is Kate. And um, Kate is, uh, I'm at a cocktail party with Kate. And she says, hey, Mark, I need a place that is equidistant from Toronto in New York. Um, and you're from upstate. Where is it that I can go with my husband, our daughter, Annie, and her husband, her fiance, and then our son and his husband in Toronto? Where is someplace? And I said, Kate, it just so happens that Duffy and I just built a place in the Finger Lakes. It's five hours from New York City. It's about four and a half hours from Toronto. Um, and, and it would absolutely be perfect. A week later, and, and again, this is all about being interconnected and being bold and being audacious. A week and a half later, um, I get a call from Adam Schulman and I know exactly who Adam is. And I remember saying to myself, oh, just play it cool. Like you get phone calls like this all the time. So he's, he's the boyfriend at the time or the fiance of Anne Hathaway. And, and so if you're really cool, you talk about Annie. So he's like, listen, Annie just uh, finished, um, uh, in a short while, she will have finished filming Les Mis. Um, she's gonna weigh all about 90 pounds. She's gonna be doing the promotional work for Batman because uh, that's gonna be entering theaters. And we need a place for her to like stow away for a month or so. Uh, so he says, tell me a little bit about your place. So um, it was perfect. It was on 28 acres. It was isolated. Who the hell is going to, you know, um, uh, think that Anne Hathaway is vacationing in Hammondsport, New York? Um, and so, um, but because we never had, because we had only just built the place, we didn't have any draperies or any shades. So we had to run around and like get shades for the entire place. And sure enough, she was, she was there for probably 45 minutes in the Finger Lakes before, uh, before people started photographing her and it started to, uh, 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 and then they ended up filming on um, their wedding invitation in, um, in the woods behind the house. So Eric, that's all about Anne Hathaway. Um, and at some point in time, I'll tell you about her like um, smoking, uh, smoking pot with her parents on the side porch to celebrate his birthday, but that's not for now. Uh, but it, it, was it was really, 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 really interesting. So, um, so anyway, um, any questions about Anne Hathaway? Annie, my good friend Annie, go like this. Anybody? <laughs> all right. Um, how about, all right. So, um, um, <laughs> so, um, I, I'm going to, I'm going to get to some of these questions in a minute. Um, let's talk about one last thing and then I'm going to start to open up for, uh, uh, for questions. Um, so I, I mentioned these salons. So one of the people in the salons was, um, uh, uh, a woman named Sandy Parker, who was head of the, uh, the chamber of commerce at the time. And, and um, I, I remember getting word from two or three friends. Um, I had invited Sandy. I did not know Sandy. We did not have any personal connection, none whatsoever. Uh, but she was head of the Chamber of Commerce. And I thought that it would be interesting for my clients to hear what's going on in the city, what's going on in business. So I went by the, uh, the head of the Chamber of Commerce. And she thought it was a little odd that I would reach out to her and didn't know her. So she reached out to two or three mutual friends 
um, she said, uh, who told her, yeah, this guy's legit. Don't worry. You know, like, you know, go over to his house, et cetera, et cetera. So we had, it was a great salon. She, you know, she talked a lot. And as a result of that, Sandy and I became friends. Well, fast forward a few years, she ends up marrying a guy named Dutch Summers. Dutch, you may not know the name, but Dutch is probably one of the five or six wealthiest Rochesterians out there. Uh, never graduated from college, owned 62 different companies. And so a year and a half, so, so I asked a favor of Sandy, come to my house. I know you don't know me. I don't know you, but you've got a big name. You're a big name in town. And you know, you've got some things that I think my friends would. So come on over. She did. I asked a favor of, your, of her. Um, we became friends. We started to socialize. And then a year and a half ago, she picks up the phone. She says, hey, listen, Dutch and I are going to be going down. Um, we're going to be staying down in Jamaica. We've got a, a week stay. Um, you want to uh, you want to come down with us? I was like, yeah, absolutely. Um, and so um, I call the next day. I said, listen, here are the flight arrangements that I've made. She said, Mark, we're flying in Dutch's jet. So um, so we so so and, and and just became bigger and bigger and bigger. So it turns out that it was myself and um, Duffy, um, Adnan Patnella, um, who was a former CEO of um, Home Properties. Um, and he owns, he owns at this point in time, what is now the largest uh, house on, on Canandaigua Lake um, that, that if anybody would like, you know, and, and, and so I've got this like property in Canandaigua Lake that if anybody is, has a buyer looking for a house that we, they could sell for $9 million, that is something that I can sell because of my relationship with Ed Patinella. Um, let me see. Uh, uh, this was right next to Danny Wegman's place. So, so it's all sort of interesting, but, but again, it was audacious and you're creating social capital. So so that's the story about uh, about that. Is this making sense to people? Am I resonating? It's just so quiet here, like there's no feedback. So, Abby, how am I doing? Am I am I am I, lay, am I laying an egg? What am I? <laughs> You're doing great. I think if anybody wants to ask questions, you guys can go ahead and unmute yourself and ask. You don't have to just put them in the chat. Feel free to talk. Thanks. Yeah, I'm feeling kind of lonely here. Mark's lonely. I'm Let's lonely. go, guys. Say, somebody asked me a question. So Mark, or Abby, think your biggest I've, I've got a question for you, Mark. Um, All right, there's a male one. voice. Something about my biggest. So what do you think your biggest surprise has come out of your database in the last 35 years? What's the big big shocker that somebody said, I want to do this? And what is what are some of the things that your database has provided you that you never thought was possible? I, honestly, and so, so listen, this is, um, and I got to be really careful because I'm answering the question truthfully. I'm not answering it because um it sounds impressive but the biggest surprise todd is the fact that um i'm this poor i'm this poor gay kid from buffalo whose father was an asshole um who now sells 60 million dollars a year in residential real estate and i've got a beautiful house in the city and a beautiful house down in the finger lakes and i fly off in private jets and hang out with you know interesting people and I bought my mom a car this past year. I pay for her mortgage every month. Um, so the biggest surprise, honestly, is that I was able to crawl out of the shithole that I was born into and, um, and make something of myself. Um, and, and, and honestly, if I, and I, I swear to God, if I can do this, anybody on this call can do it. You just have to think big and you've got to um, you you you've got you've got to apply yourself on a daily basis. And by the way, not everybody wants to sell to sell sixty million dollars worth of real estate every year. It's exhausting. It's it's absolutely exhausting. So maybe your goal is to sell five million or ten million. Do it. You can do it. If that's your goal, then do it. You can do it. So Todd, that's the biggest surprise to me is that I was able. And by the way, it's not ending. Um, you know, and we we've got plans. You know, we got plans for bigger and better and more and more and more. Oh, and by the way, the other thing, Todd, is you know, as a result of all this, you know, I now have 125 rental units in and around the Park Avenue neighborhood that are all in beautiful condition. Um, you know, beautiful tile kitchens, beautiful tile baths, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and I and I throw that in only because when I'm done selling real estate, you know, 12, 15 years from now, I've got a nice retirement. Um, so again, that's the biggest surprise. Um, there was another question, a uh, female voice. I apologize. Yeah, that was that was me, Mark. Hi, it's Allison. Um, oh, okay, Allison. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, so I've got uh, some clients, very uh, picky, and looked at everything on God's green earth. I feel, but I'm starting to think about looking back to houses sold in 2015 to see if maybe they might want to sell it. Do you think that's uh, fruitful or a waste of time? 
Um, it's fruitful in two ways. One, you never know. When I first started selling real estate, um, I was 23 years old and it was March and it was 33 degrees and it was rain. It wasn't raining. It was raining snow. You know, that kind of like terrible. And I just started to walk through the Browncroft neighborhood and, and stupidly, I was like, hi, my name is Mark Sewick. If you ever want to sell a property, you know, please give me a call. And I get my card and people were like, yeah, sure, kid. Like, you know, doors being slammed in my face one after another after another. And some crazy woman said, yeah, I actually need to sell. And I got a house on, on, on uh, Dorchester um, mm -hmm. as a result of that. So be audacious um, and do it. And, um, and you, might, you might find somebody who's going to sell. And if these are f former clients of yours, then, um, <clears throat> then they'll be glad to hear from you. Um, if they're, did you say they were former clients, Allison? They're, they're, new, they're new clients, but I've been looking. No, no, no the, people, the people you'd be calling to. No, unknowns, completely okay, unknowns. unknowns. Well, then, yeah. then do it. And then, 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 then do it. And you know what? Um, uh, okay. And if you strike up a conversation with somebody and you, see, you feel as though there's some kind of relationship they may have formed, you're going to, the next morning, walk into your office. There's going to be a note card on your desk. You're going to set, you're going to send them a, a personal note and you're going to add them to your database and you're going to continually mail to them um, uh, uh, in, in perpetuity. Uh, Deborah. And, and this yeah. would be postcards mailed out though. The, it's so far out. I, I'm in the uh, boonies. So everything is spread way out. An hour yeah, but you know what? <clears throat> yeah, s s send postcards, make phone okay. calls. Yeah. Okay. Deborah. All right, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> Due to COVID, you can't make cold calls. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I wasn't going to get into that. But at that point in time, we're assuming that this is all like post-COVID. Oh, okay. <laughs> hey, Mark, you've got a really good question in the chats talking about uh, what's advice for a newbie with a zero budget to jumpstart her business in 30 days? Um, call everybody that you know. Tell them that you are selling real estate. Um, actually, no, the most important, let me back up. The most important thing. Cam, I'm going to... Um, Cam, unmute. What's the most important thing for her to do? I, I thought you were headed the right direction with the database. That's what I was, I was not in, in agreement with that. Yep. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Focus on the database. Absolutely. It's free and, you know, just, just have genuine conversations. Um, you know, kind of yep. like I think you were getting to, but. It, it, exactly. The most important thing, create the database. Yeah. Uh, I was talking to Cam the other day about, um, I, I asked him how many people are in his database. And then I said, and how many friends do you have on Facebook? And there was a difference, a delta between the two of 330 names or thereabouts. I said, yeah. why the hell are, th are these people not in your database? Now, knowing Cam as I've gotten to know him, they're probably all in his database at this point in time. This is a conversation we had at the end of last week. Um, but take those people from Facebook and add them to your database. Um, and, um, and add your mother's best friend and add your sister's best friend from um, sophomore year in high school. And the, the woman that you ran into in aisle 14 A of Wegmans yesterday and write the, and, and, um, and cr create this database and then send them a note saying, hey, I'm, I'm selling real estate um, and I've joined Keller Williams and I'm really looking forward to it. And people are gonna take that note they're like, oh, that's really nice, I'm gonna toss it out, okay? fully expect that they're going to toss it out. And then three weeks later, even if you've got your business cards in hand right now, three weeks later, send them another note. Hey, my business cards just came in. I just want to let you know. And then three or four weeks after that, um, actually, you know what? Um, you, can, you can actually send them a holiday card and then send them a, your business card um, in three, three or four weeks after that. And then you can send them something after that talking about um, how you think that COVID is, is going to um, impact real estate in the year to come or about interest rates or whatever. And you just keep mailing over and over and over again. So that after literally it'll take two years for people to think, oh, she's actually serious about this. I think she's actually doing well. And at the same time you're doing that, make sure that you do what I said earlier, which is it's one thing to mail to people in these large numbers, but then you've got to follow up and you've got to make sure that it's personal. So one of the things that I'm going to be doing later today um, is creating a list of people. So things are finally starting to slow down for me over the course of the next four or five, over the course of the next four weeks, I'm going to be calling um, literally 200 people um, just to reach out to them and say, Hey, how are you doing? I know we're all, you know, sort of a, a quasi isolation. Is it impacting you personally? Is it impacting your holidays? I hope you have a great Christmas. I hope you have a great Hanukkah. Uh, Happy New Year. Let's hope for a better 2021. That's what everybody should be doing uh, right now. So I hope that answered the question. There was another question. Sherry put in the chat box, what if you have several friends that are agents and you share mutual friends, do you still add them to your database? 
Absolutely. Absolutely. You're not, you know, yes. Um, because, because it's an increasingly interconnected uh, community, absolutely you add them to the database. Um, and then if, if you're, if, if, um, if Tom should decide that he's going to work with you, that's great. If Tom should decide that he's going to work with, um, you know, your mutual friend who's a real estate agent, that's Tom's decision. So yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, be aggressive. Did you put something in the chat earlier? I thought I saw a question for you. I was holding on to. Do you have any idea how large your budget is for marketing client care? Did Mark answer that question for you? Uh, no, I've not. Um, I don't. I, no I don't need an exact number. I was like, do you try to make a percentage? Like, you know what? Like we'll spend like five percent, you know, you just kind of do it. I, 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 honestly, I have no clue, Mary. Um, if Nicole were here, uh, she could tell you to the penny. Um, she's she's our operations manager, uh, but I, I I literally have no clue. Um, here's what I do know, <clears throat> and my philosophy um, has always and forever been: if I if I need to do it, do it, and if um, if it's if it, if it represents at the end of the year, 5% of my budget, well, it's 5%. And if it represents 12% or 13%, it's 12 or 13%. All that I know is I just keep doing it um, and doing it and doing it and doing it. So all of a sudden I'm realizing like, wow, you know what would be really cool? Um, uh, Duffy, my partner sits on um, uh, Society for Chamber of Music, Rochester. It's, it's, it's chamber music. You know, some friends of ours off in the RPO have this thing. And I thought, wow, it'd be really cool. Like, you know, people are isolated. Why don't we just invite all 1,000 uh, uh, or 1,200 people who I have a relationship with? Let's all invite them to a Zoom concert. Um, and then probably later today, going to propose that my team and I um, uh, send out a, a, an email to 1,200 people saying there's a Zoom concert. It's 7 o'clock on this day. Um, it's going to be a chamber concert. And for the first 50 people who, um, who actually um, uh, uh, RSVP in the affirmative, we're going to drop off um, um, eggnog and cookies so you can enjoy yourself. Um, and this is just something we started talking about in the past few days. I have no idea what it's going to cost, but I think that I need to do something like that for the holidays, um, for whatever reason. Um, I mean, but, but you'll, you'll get to the point, in, um, and maybe you're there now where you're giving enough business to, um, a mortgage broker or enough business to an engineer that you can say to them, you know what, can I get a hundred bucks for you to buy the cookies and the eggnog? Right. Okay. To start to defray your costs. Other questions? Any last questions, closing words, statements? One more question, Mark. Nobody else yeah. wants to ask any. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> I know obviously you're further along because you're a team, right? And so you have a lot of people doing some of the things that solo agents need to do themselves. Yeah. But if I'm looking like down the road on how I should be spending my day, how are you spending your day? Like, is it all lead ginning? I mean, is it planning? Like, what is it a kind of a typical work day in the life look like for you? You know, it's, it's a really, really interesting question, Mary, in that um, one of the things I'm realizing over the course of the past two years is that my life is in my role, I should say, is changing to the point where um, I think that, that, that what I'll be doing is just calling people uh, day in and day out um, and, and ca calling people and, um, and following up with people and meeting with people and wishing them a happy birthday and sending flowers um, and inviting them over for dinner and hosting parties and, um, and, and, and I think that is really where, where this is headed. And, and, and then going on the appointment to secure the listing and then going on the, and then making sure that, you know, that I've got people, and I've got great people around me. I've got an amazing, amazing, amazing uh, 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 a group of people around me. Um, oh, oh, <laughs> thanks, Cam. Uh, yep. so, <laughs> see, this is why I love Cam. He reached out to Nicole, um, who immediately knew that 15 to 20% of everything that I make goes toward marketing. So thank you. Um, um, but, 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 but Mary, I think that, you know, I think it's a really, really interesting question because when I first started, everything that I described, I would do it on my own. And I would literally work 10 hours a day, seven days a week, um, so that I could hire then an assistant part-time uh, so that 30 some years later, I've gotten to the point where now I'll just wake up in the morning and I'll pour myself a cup of coffee and just start like hanging out with people and chatting with people and going out to dinner with them and having cocktails and hosting parties. Very glamorous, isn't it? Um, 
<laughs> so anybody else, anything? Peter, Thank you so much. This was, this was really helpful. I, it, I, I, I like the fact that you come from like helping people because that's what I love to do. So it's hard for me to just like pick up the phone and be like, hey, by the way, this is all about me. Like, how are you doing? But this is me. So it's really nice to hear like different things that like you go out and you literally just help people. And so I love that. So thank you so much. Yeah. And who was it? I apologize. Um, I Jacqueline. Oh, Jacqueline. Great. Thank you, Jacqueline. Yeah, it, it really is. Just keep creating that social capital. It's a very, very, very small town and just keep doing it over and over and over and over again. And you're never going to know. I mean, the person who asked me about the train station, I have no idea who that is. I'm hoping that at some point in the future, she's going to call and say, Hey, you help me, you know, find out how it is that I can get on the train. You know what? And I want you to list my house for sale. Or, you know what, or maybe it'll be this, you know, uh, Alyssa that I'm speaking to tomorrow who's 17 years old, and maybe she'll be a member of my team next year. Or maybe she'll refer her aunt to me to sell real estate. You just never know. It comes from all over the place. So thanks for saying that. It really is. Just be, not, be nice. Be nice. <laughs> yeah. There, there was one more question. How big is? How big is your team? Oh, my, my team. Um, who asked that question? Rita. Um, Rita, why don't uh, why don't we take that offline? Because I've got another um, I've got a staff meeting that uh, that I was supposed to have uh, started um, five minutes ago. Uh, but in, in, so in short, as, as, as people are leaving, uh, everybody, you know, hey, thanks everybody. Uh, hang on, Rita, I'll give you the short answer. But as people are leaving, um, thank you all very very much. I'm just a phone call away, a text message away, an email away. Uh, reach out if you got questions or concerns. I appreciate your attention, and I hope it was worthwhile. All right. Yeah. Thanks so much, Rita. In answer to your question. Um, I've got an operations manager, Nicole. I've got a listing coordinator um, who is uh, Dana. I've got a transaction coordinator. Her, her name is Yvonne, a social media coordinator. We are hiring a lead generator and so and uh, client concierge to replace somebody who left back in the fall. And then we've got um, my uh, a property manager. And then there's um, four agents. So, um, and I'm more than glad to talk to people about you know, what everybody's role is or how it is that that started to, to grow and morph and, and morph and how it is that it changed and hiring a, a, an executive coach and creating team culture. And like, you know, it's just, it's, 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 it's a, it's a book that's just, you know, um, uh, my email address uh, page is mark at mark .com. And so that's M A R K at M A R K S I W I E C M A R K S I W I. Oh, thanks Cam. Jesus. <laughs> I love Cam. <laughs> so, um, all right, I'm going to jump off here, folks, um, and I'm going to go um, to this meeting. Cam, I'll see you in the next meeting. Thanks, everybody. Have a great Thank day. You, Mark. I appreciate your attention. Thank Take you. Care. Have all a good right. day, guys.